No, I am a made in Gambia product. I'm an African product. Why are we saying Africans are saying that it's not possible on the continent? Well, it's because probably a lot of reasons. One, the right policies are not in place to encourage Africans, you know, to, to develop themselves and then to exploit opportunities. Um, I'll give you a good example. Things like uh, investor. Investor is synonymous to Western or somebody outside of Africa. Not, not our color, color, not the black man. Hi, my name is Mustafa Njai, commonly called TAF. I started about 47 years ago in my career as a carpenter. And over the years, I have worked in every field in construction. And facing a lot of challenges, which I just turned into opportunities. And over these years, I have always had big dreams. But the biggest dream I've had so far, my vision over the next 20 years is to develop one million homes across Sub-Saharan Africa. Whilst some might find this very challenging, I just believe in the quote from Nelson Mandela, which says, it always seems impossible until it's done. And inshallah, it will be done. I'm smiling a lot, please forgive me. It's not my fault because I found myself in the smiling coast of Africa. As soon as you land in this beautiful country, everyone welcomes you with a beautiful smile. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, some of you will be wondering, Maya, you've been to Gambia. Sundays in the Gambia is super late. Look behind me. This is the most popular beach in the Gambia. Why are you in the Gambia again? Taf brought me back to the Gambia. If you don't know who Taf is, then I guess you just subscribe to my YouTube channel. Mr. Mustafa, the yeah. Gambian that is making a huge impact in Nigeria. A year ago, I went to Nigeria and uh, I met and interviewed Taf. He built one of the biggest estates in Nigeria. The story I'm gonna share today is about a Gambian man who moved from Gambia, came to Nigeria, to build this biggest estate in Port Harcourt that you're seeing on your screen. And he told me that he's not from Nigeria, he's from the Gambia. So you know what? I always wanted to know how it all started for people so that you would believe the story. So I had to trace him back to his roots. So this is, this is, this is the first house I built. You this know, house? This house here is the how first the house I built. Three bedrooms with a living, dining, kitchen, and two toilets. We are at the Madiba Mall, and he loves Madiba with all his heart. If you're from South Africa, you know what you need to do for me? 
like this video and share it because this man adores and celebrates Mandela as his own. That's what I call tough the Pan-Africanist. I mean, he always crossed borders. Can you believe it? He's from Gambia. He built estates in what? Nigeria. He's doing some in Sierra Leone and different part of Africa. I'm scared, but I have to knock. Ha! <laughs> my should I should I say my billionaire uncle or my billionaire dad or my? See, how you doing? It's good to see you again. Good to see you, Maya. Whoa. How you doing? No, have a seat. Thank you. Ha, have a, can, can I sit down? Yeah, why not? You know, when, when I, I meet billionaires like that, I, no, I, I, I get to shake you. Billionaire know. talk now. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> address me as a dad, huh? Wow. As a dad. I had to put on this clothes just because I was coming to meet you because people were saying that, oh, put some respect on wealthy people's name, dress officially. But I didn't forget my slippers though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but see you in t-shirt. I think I will change my t-shirt. But you know, for me, really, it doesn't matter. I mean, um, you don't judge a book by its cover. Hmm. Uh, but some protocols do demand that you dress properly. For example, if you're going to see the president, hmm. protocols demand that you dress up to a certain look. <laughs> if you're going to see a minister, the same. But here, you're coming to see an entrepreneur who really, dressing is not the issue. The, the image is not the issue. What is important is the content. Well, so over the years, um, I have learned to dress easy. I'm very comfortable with what I wear. And because I, I am running around the sites all the time, I am comfortable in my t-shirt and, and my, my joggers and my sneakers. With always my baseball cap to cover me up. If you are watching this video for the first time, you probably don't know who uh, Mr. Mustafa Njai is. I mean, even sitting here right now, it's such a privilege to sit beside him. Um, if you should, if I should give you the chance to introduce yourself, I mean, if someone is watching this video for the first time, who are you? I am Mustafa Njai, and everybody calls me Taf. Taf is short for my name, which I have also adopted as my company's name when I started it some 32 years ago. But I am an African entrepreneur, very obsessed about construction, which I started a long time ago, but now into development and, and real estate development. I am the man who has this huge dream with a huge heart to develop one million homes across Sub-Saharan Africa. Building my houses in every country, which is the 54 countries in, in, in Africa. How many countries have you built in so far? I've built in, um, uh, in Nigeria, I have built in well, Senegal just a bit, and also the Gambia. And are you coming to Ghana anytime soon? I don't think so. I, I, I personally think that Ghana is too saturated. I mean, the competition is too tough. I go into green fields. You know, I go into areas where everybody abandons. Where everybody says, no, no, this place is a tough place. This place, there's no market. And then I bring it up. I For example, when, I, when you met me in, in Port Harcourt. So when we came here, very few people believed in us. They thought, oh, no, no, that's another, you know, fly by night or a 419, as we say in, in Nigeria. Nigeria. Oh, he's a scammer. You know, he's saying, no, he doesn't need any money. All he needs is just the land. Oh, give him the land, let him see. And actually, even the land that they was, I was given was all muddy. It's, you know, this is River State. River State, there's no land. So we had to sand field 650,000 cubic meters of sand to be able to, where you are now, mm -hmm. This was all water. At high tide, it will be two meter high, two meter deep of water. So we had to sand fill it. You know, from the river, we pump it. At times, about two kilometers away, we'll get a dredger and dredge and fill it up, compact it. So real engineering really happened here. I mean, even some Nigerians will not do business in Port Harcourt. But I went there, and what that means all the time is that you break the glass ceiling. Where there are challenges, I turn those challenges into opportunities. So what country are you looking forward next? Oh, I'm looking forward into, into Sierra Leone. 
Hmm. Uh, for good reasons. I think Sierra Leone for me is virgin. I have never seen landscaping as good as what I saw in, in Sierra Leone. True. So um, I think the government also is ready for business. So I have been there three times. I have met the president. I have met the minister of lands. And I've already signed an MOU with them. And this time, we're not building estates anymore. We're building cities and micro cities. So we hope that by the end of this year, before the end of this year, we'll start with our first one. So, um, uh, you know, uh, better again. Every time we do something, it's better than the one we've done previously. So Sierra Leone is my next stop. Let Sierra Leoneans be ready. It's yeah. those in the diaspora. that we're going to build the biggest city, well, city and estates in Sierra Leone. You know what, before I go into details, I mean, a year ago I met you in Port Harcourt. We want to know, I mean, after our video, what happened? Well, after our video, I must say a big thank you to Wodemaya. You, 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 you really caused trouble for me. I am getting, you know, mails from every corner of the continent. Whoa. Yeah, people are saying, oh, yeah, yeah, please, can we partner? Can we do this in my country? You know, South Sudan, you know, Sudan itself, Somalia. South Africa, Namibia, uh, Congo, Kinshasa, everywhere. People are just sending in mails that, oh, we want to partner with you. So, but what we do is we take one step at a time. time. So, after Nigeria, what we did was when we met me, I came back here. So, when I came back here, what I did was to work on the first city called the Tough City. Okay. The Tough City will be the biggest city in Gambia. In terms of size, it's twice the size of Banjul, Banjul the, the capital, capital city. So what we are building now in, in Gunjur, a C4 area, it's a new city which is 500 hectares with 5,000 housing units. And we've already started. Now, now that we have it running, my next step is Sierra Leone. Then after Sierra Leone, when we start it, then we'll move into other countries. Depending on how um, uh, the country has its um, priorities right. Meaning, creating an environment for people like us to come and invest. You know what, when I went to Sierra Leone, I was a bit disappointed um, to the extent that I had to cause, like, um, I did a video just to cause a bit of uh, controversy. I'm in Sierra Leone, and I've been crying for one good week. Like, I just wanna leave, because anytime I go out, I just feel like crying. There is no longer civil war in Sierra Leone. Ebola is over. So why are African diaspora of Sierra Leone descent not coming back home to develop the country? Telling the diaspora to come back home. So knowing that you're building a city in Sierra Leone, it's a good one. I mean, but I hope you got the Sierra Leone through my videos though. Did you get a Sierra Leone out of No, it? Sierra Leone not, not true. Actually, Sierra Leone, I got, I got the invite from the president. But I will tell oh. you what happened in Sierra Leone with your video. Yeah, the president actually invited me about twice. Called me, when are you coming? When are you coming? But then the ambassador, the ambassador here, the high commissioner here in the Gambia, mm -hmm. walked into my office one day with all her staff that Mr. Njai, we want to take you to Sierra Leone. Okay. You know, she's a retired school teacher and she behaved like a school teacher, like a school <laughs> mid, the head teacher. She came in to give me instructions that Mr. Njai, we are taking you to Sierra Leone. So I told her, Ma, I am going. And I told my staff that I must go to Sierra Leone. The way this woman behaved to get me to Sierra Leone, I have to go. Mm -hmm. And I must say that I am pleasantly surprised by the reception I got in Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. But what happened when I went to see the Minister of Local, the Minister of Lands and uh, uh, awesome. Housing and something, you know, when I went to see him, I walked in. And the man just jumped off his seat. He says, what? This is unbelievable. It was only today that I called all my staff that we need to go and find this Gambian that I saw on this video, you know, done by this Ghanaian YouTuber, uh, to come and invest here. <laughs> so he immediately went out and called all his staff, took me to their conference room, and said, guess who I have here? The Gambian that I was telling you is here. So yes, thank you very much for promoting us out there we, and I hope with this video it will be much bigger exactly and we hope you get a commission out of it yes Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
personally want to know, yeah? So far, how many houses have you built? Uh, we've built about 2,500 houses since we started. And the goal is to build a million? A million. We need to build a million homes. Tough. I, I'm in the Gambia right now, and I really want to know how it all started. Yeah, I'll, I'll take you where, where it started. It started with the house that I owned myself, my first house. That was where I, the first house that I built. So this is, this, is, this is the first house I built. You this know, house? This house here is the How first the house I built. Three bedrooms with a living, dining, kitchen, and two toilets. Whoa. So it was the first house I built. Actually, when I built it, it was a time that I was employed. And it took me six years to build this house. Six years? Yeah, six can, years can to I build this house. Question? Go How on. long does it take you to build a, a four bedroom unit now? Oh, I can do it in three, four months. When we really want to hit it, three, four months we can build it. And I built my first house when I was 26, even before I got married. So I... I, 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 I 26, where did you get the money from? Well, I was being well paid by the company that I work for. You know, I was being paid like an international staff. And I was savings, I had the culture of saving money. You know, so yeah, I built my house at the age of 26, 27, and at 28 I got married. So did you sell it? No, 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 I'm keeping the house. I still keep it. My niece is living here. So yeah, I, I keep it for family. And I cannot sell it because it is my first house. Huh? This has to be passed on to my, my, my great grandkids. How long did you stay in here then? Oh, I stayed in here from, uh, I think about 1989 all the way to maybe 1995, 96. So, but you so, started the Taft company in the year 19... 1990. I started in 1990. So, so when I started the company, I was living here. And then across here, this land would be belong to my uncle. And I had a small office there. And that's where I started. Just one small office and a place for a secretary. But in the meantime, let, let me tell you about my office here. Okay. Where we are, this is my office. And I have moved offices from one place to the other. Because I, I was very heavy on construction, doing the work myself. I used to leave, I used to work in, in a construction yard. But now we are more of a development company. Okay. So we don't need to have any construction yard because we subcontract our, con our construction work. So this is a mall, uh, mall and also office complex. So retail and commercial. Three floors, the ground floor is all retail and there are also smaller offices. What we have seen recently, we have seen, you know, small outlets in there, about 22 square meters, 44 square meters, and that people are rent renting out and doing them small, some small businesses. Mm. Then on the first floor, we have our own operations, where our sales and marketing and the operations for Tough Africa Global is. Mm. We also have some tenants there. But then on the, on the second floor where I am is the executive floor. So uh, this is where I am, and there are also other executive offices. Now, when I was doing this some years back, some people thought that it was too far. Others also thought that there wasn't a market for it. Because if you walk in here, you will feel like you are in Washington or you are in London or you are in Dubai. It's done properly, that's what I mean. Mm. Then, um, uh, for that reason, we now understand that there is a demand for this, and we are now building two towers in the institutional area, you know, where a lot of offices are. And then lo location-wise, it's in the middle of the urban area. Mm. We're building two towers, which is called the Taft Twins. After building the, the Mariba Mall, okay. where we are now with our offices, we just found out that there's a demand for good offices. So we decided to build the Taft Twins. It's two towers and each of them will have 7,000 square meters of retail and office space. Wow. So two of them put together is 14,000 square meters of retail and floor space. It will be the most modern office and it'll be a smart building and it'll be a green building too. I mean, is it almost done? How long is it gonna take then? We have another eight months and then the first offices will be ready. Okay. What else do you want to show me? 
Well, apart from the workers, there's nothing much to show you here, but we'll go on and then I'll show you the other things that we're doing. Tav, let me understand, yeah? You build your first house. Is it because of, is it because of this house that inspired you to start a real estate company? Well, I built the house first, but you know, this is my business. I mean, I was in construction, but real estate, I really started when I went to America on, an, on, on a program called EI, Entrepreneur International. The American government, you know, gave me a program to go and see how developers were working. Okay. So I was inspired. I was attached to a company in Las Vegas, being, you know, doing some development. So when I came back, I built my first units. I really, I was renting out at first. And then later I built some to sell. This is Kerry Abajan Apartments. Oh. It's um, uh, four maisonettes, two bedroom and three bedroom. Okay. This I built in 1991, after I was sent on a training program in the US by the American government on the EI, it's called Entrepreneur International, hmm. where they expose you know, young entrepreneurs from the third world to go and see how things are done in the US. So I was attached to a developer in Las Vegas, okay. and actually he was developing and selling, but I couldn't sell at the time. So what I did was I bought this parcel of land because by then I started making money from my business, then built these two units, these, these four units, but not to sell, but to rent it out because there's a demand for rent. So I kept it as an in investment portfolio. So I was renting it out and up to now, it's within the family business that we rent it out. How many plots is this? Well, this is one plot as such. We don't have here standard plots as such. Okay. But this one plot, very odd, you know, but as you can see, we can fit in a pool and then we have these, they are maisonettes. So you have on the ground floor, you have um, a living room, dining, a kitchenette and a toilet. And then on top, you have two bedrooms and they share the toilet. Yeah, Maya, this is the first estate that I built. This is the first one that I bought the land and built five houses, five units here, okay. and then sold them out. And the reason why it happened was that I was in the US again and um, on a program with the World Bank. And the Gambian ambassador at the time appealed to me that, look, there are Gambians who would be sending money home, but they don't have houses. Okay. So why don't you start just buying the land, building it complete, as what we're doing now? So I came in as a trial, bought this parcel of land and built five units, and they were sold out immediately. So I guess this was the birth of the tough Real estate development. This is the birth of the Taft City. What you see now, yeah. with 5,000 houses, we started with five houses. <laughs> this is the second estate that we built after we did the five houses in Kololi. Hmm. It is called Yarambamba, and it's low-cost housing. The government gave us the land of 10.5 hectares, and we built 210 Affordable housing, what they call affordable houses now, but then it was low income housing. But low income, but nicely all done. 300 square meters for every plot, and then two bedrooms and three bedrooms. In dollar terms at that time, two bedrooms were being sold at uh, $15,000. Well, and three bedrooms was being sold at $20,000. What do you mean by government allocated land? Does it mean that you, didn't, this, you got this land for free? Yes, I could, what happened was at the time, no private individual was investing in housing delivery, affordable housing delivery. So government wanted to encourage the private sector to invest in housing so that it can be affordable. You know, so government allocated the land. Then we obviously built it up and then margins were low and that was why it was affordable. In Dallas terms at the time, a unit was being sold here at $190,000. So the value of the land that was calculated was passed on to the buyer and ah. not the contractor. I think we need to <laughs> give a big shout out to the government that time. Yes. Um, and I think this should be done across the continent because I feel like the real estate business, especially in Ghana, is extremely expensive knowing that you have to buy a house, four bedroom house, for over $200,000. 
Yeah, look, the way forward for throughout Africa, if you want to do affordable housing mm. and you know, house your citizens, you cannot have the developer buy the land. Because once you buy the land, then it is a cost on the project. And you just pass over the cost to the buyer. So what the government should do is they should take the land and then invest it in the development and then stop the developer not putting a cost into the final price of, as, as, as part of the land, mm. as part of the project. Mm. Actually, it's still happening. Sierra Leone, government is contributing the land. The project you did in Sierra Leone? Yes, the government is contributing the land. What about the project you did in Nigeria? Nigeria, the same thing. The government contributed the land. So it was affordable and a part of it was for public servants. So there's a condition all the time. Anytime government contributes the land, they have a say on the price. They'll say, okay, look, for this category of people who are nationals, you cannot sell this, uh, the, 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 the houses more than this price. And then in some cases, even they give you duty-free concessions. Whoa. In Nigeria, we had what we call a pioneer status. So they gave us a tax break for a certain number of years. Hmm. So um, uh, that's just what happens. So government needs to contribute to make housing affordable. If I ever come to Gambia or I go anywhere, no one has to tell me that this estate belongs to Taf. You know why? Why? The colors. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do the colors because, you know, they have a lot of dust tombs here. Okay. You know, very sandy. So for that reason, you know, we make these colors, we can, we can really hide the, the, the dirt. But one thing I love about your estate is the fact that you always plant trees and flowers in every estate that I've seen that you own it. All of them. Yeah, you know, let me tell you what, what, one thing about flowers, huh? Flowers is the makeup, you know, that the women put on. On, on their faces, huh? Can you imagine a woman without any makeup? I love, I love my women without makeup. Yeah, but anyway, ah, mostly but they, <laughs> you, they're attractive when they put all that makeup. makeup. Yeah, so that's, that's the same thing. True. If you build houses without flowers, without green, mm. it's bare. Yeah. So you to, the makeup is the flowers, the trees, and, and it's good for the environment. So we plant as much flowers and as much trees as possible. Estate number what? This is estate number four. And this one actually, we bought the land, you know, from a local owner, 20 hectares of land. And this was in 2017, mm -hmm. when we had the new government that came in. So we bought the land, 20 hectares, and we did 375 units. And again, sold out quickly. In 18 months, we all, all sold out. Why? But what we did was, part of it was readily built, and then the other part was sites and services. The reason why actually it got sold so fast, after 2017, there was a lot of confidence that was built. And Gambians wanted to come back, people who stood, who were away, they wanted to come back and they invested heavily into housing. Tough. You sold the um, third estate one for $15,000. How much did you sell this one for? These ones we were selling for about $30,000, $35,000. And again, the size of land, we even went a bit smaller. We have a unit here that is under 200 square meters mm. of land mm. and then built about 70 square meters and people bought it and they're living it. I mean throughout this journey of building what has been the major challenge that you face as a developer? In the Gambia the major challenge is, is labor. Skills labor is the major challenge. We have a tradition of um, French-speaking countries coming into our country like Senegal and you know to come in and do all these technical works. So I would like to appeal, you know, to the young ones to pick up skills. We need more carpenters, we need more masons, we need more electricians, we need more plumbers. That is a major challenge today. And even in building, we don't have the young people now going for technical skills. And how do you overcome these challenges then? Oh, well, we have a technical training center now. We have a technical within our foundation where we take young people, we train them with skills, and we employ them. But apart from that, you know, in West Africa, <laughs> there's free movement of goods and people. Yeah. So we see quite a number of other nationalities coming in. You know, have people coming from Nigeria, from Sierra Leone. Because again, on the other way around, when we went to Nigeria, I took there 400 Gambians and Senegalese. Oh, wow. Yeah, 400 of them. 
because of the speed that we wanted to get things job, the, the way we wanted to get jobs done, we had to, you know, bring in a lot of labor. Mm. So Senegalese are very skillful, okay. and we took a lot of them there. I just want to tell you that you are an inspiration and let, let me ask this question what are the core values behind your success well I think hard work number one if I just reduce it to two if any young person who's watching wants to be successful the the combination that you must have is to work hard and be honest these are key values that if you have it I see no reason why you shouldn't be successful. Mr. Taff, you used to be a carpenter. I mean, you said you go to America, you come back, you get inspired and then you come back. It's like you get so much inspired in America and then you come here and then exhibit it and then it works out. Uh, let me know, um, at some point you ever left this country, lived abroad all your life? Never. I have never. The longest time that I've lived outside of Gambia is when I went to Port Harcourt. And I wouldn't even stay more than a month without coming home. So at any one time, I have never, I cannot remember staying more than three months out of this country. Everything that I know, that I have been trained, learned, everything that I've heard in my life, I made it in this country. So does it, it means that it's possible to make it in the Gambia? Oh yes. I keep telling people that, look, I am a made in the Gambia product. Gambia can be proud of me because everything that I can boost up today, that is now going over to other countries, it was all made in this small country called the Gambia. So what are the youth of Gambia doing wrong then? Well, the thing is, I think they want to get rich too fast. Uh, I did my apprenticeship, and my apprenticeship was to work first as a carpenter. Then from there, you know, I was employed, and I was honest with my employer, employers. Then I started working, and you know, I just went, you know, step by step. You know, in life, Life is a ladder and not an elevator. You know, in the ladder you go one step after the other. But life is not an elevator where you just go in, press a button and it takes you to the last floor. No, that's not life. It seems estate number five is still under construction. Yeah, it is, it, is under, it is under construction and um, it's uh, six, over 600 units on this one. 600? Yeah, 600 units. This is called Tulip Gardens. And um, it's the one we built after Dalaba. So we always try to take a huge step. So from 375, this next one is over 600. Now, what really inspires you to do what you do? Because I, I feel like I need to know because you start from five, the next thing you move to 200, now we are at 600. I guess your next project will be 5,000 or 6,000. Yes, you know what inspires me that there's a demand. I mean, putting a roof over people's head, it's a basic human right. So there's a demand and for business, we need to, we need to supply these houses. We need to find a way, ways of supplying these houses. So because there's so much demand, it's never enough what you build. But what I've noticed is that all your houses that you've shown me that you've built are all affordable. Are you known as the affordable man? Yes, affordable housing <laughs> is our speciality. If you want to go up market, please don't come close to us. If you want to do social housing, we cannot do social housing. We do affordable housing. And therefore, that's why we build houses like this. When you talk about affordable housing, what is your price range then? Affordable housing, let me tell you now, because me, I'm an, I am an African developer. Everything I do is spec at the African level. Okay. And I think research has shown that if you want to build anything less than $10,000 or $15,000, that will be classified as social housing. And government needs to do a lot to bring the price down. Now, affordable housing is in the bracket of around $25,000, $30,000 going up. Mm. And that's where it's for the middle and upper middle class. Then the high end luxury will start from maybe the $100,000 going up. So this is now your 600 project, 600 unit project. What is the next one? Uh, next one, we're not doing estates anymore. We're doing cities. This is the last one because we're not doing anything less than a thousand anymore. 
Whoa. We don't involve in any project that is less than a thousand. So now anything we do, we don't do estates. We do cities and micro cities. So what city are you doing at this very moment? Tough city is the one we're doing in the Gambia. Top city. Yes. I would love to go there, but before you take me there, let me ask you my final question. I mean, Nigeria was not a city. The one you built in Nigeria that I came to see. No, no, that's not a city. It's an estate. No, but it was 40 hectares of it, land. You had a school in there. Yes, we had everything, but it's still an estate with all the facilities. What, what, but a city is different. What, what is the definition for a city? A city is where you have everything: live, walk, and play. That is what a city is. I was playing football when I was in Port Harcourt. Yeah, but you were not working there. There were no offices. I came to there see There were no that industries. The there were no industries. <laughs> but in a city, you have to have industries, you have to have a hospital, you have to have university, you have to have a high school, primary school, and also residential. And you're doing all of that? All of them at the tough city. That's the model we're pouring out now. Tough, I, 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 I want to see. I'm so excited right now. And um, can you take me there? Let's head out. Thank you.